Once upon a time, there was a monkey, a Japanese macaque, who for whatever reason led his tribe away from the other monkeys, away from the warm subarctic forests, way up north to where no other non-human primate has chosen to live, the coldest northernmost regions of Japan. The Japanese macaque, or snow monkey, has featured prominently in the religion, folklore, and art of Japan, as well as in proverbs and idiomatic expressions in the Japanese language. In Shinto belief, mythical beasts known as Raiju sometimes appeared as monkeys and kept Raijin, the god of lightning, company. The three wise monkeys which, you know, warn people to see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil, are carved in relief over the door of the famous Toshugu Shrine in Nikko. As the monkey is part of the 12 Chinese zodiac signs, which has been used for centuries in Japan, it was sometimes portrayed in paintings as a metaphor for a particular year. To help illustrate this, we can compare it to the way Taurus the bull represents the age of Taurus, for example, in our 12 zodiac signs, followed by the Aryan age, Aries the ram, followed by Pisces around the time of Jesus, which is why we see the familiar association with the fish. Now getting back to our snow monkeys, this small group of breakaway macaques stumbled upon a hotel in the cold Japanese winter and they started indulging themselves in the hot mineral springs that the hotel had offered for their guests. So this is not normal non-human primate behavior and there are no other known examples of this in the world that I'm aware of. But the hotel owners apparently put up with it, allowing the monkeys to soak up the warmth from the hot water. That is, until this new area was designated for them where they have become quite a tourist attraction in Japan, spending much of their time in, I guess one can call this meditation, and they have incorporated the hot springs into their culture. So regardless of their social status, and they definitely do have social rank, but in the mineral pools, they're all essentially equal, everyone hanging out and taking part in the pools. These naturally occurring hot springs with the steam, jagged rocks, and high altitudes have inspired the name Hell's Valley, but also known as Snow Monkey Park. So this one colony has managed to survive and thrive during the harsh snowy winters by adapting to this aquatic lifestyle by using the thermal heat that comes up from below, even though they had some human help in the construction of the spa areas. While it is true that the sun is vital to the chain of life on the surface of our world, life also exists in places that have not been exposed to sunlight for millions, if not billions of years. Solar rays play a vital role for photosynthesis in plants, but hydrothermal vents provide heat and minerals from below the earth, which through chemosynthesis sustain extremophiles, a term for organisms that exist in extreme conditions. So for example, bacteria, which consume the minerals ejected out of these vents, become a food source for algae, which not only float on the surface water but can also live totally independent of the sun by these hydrothermal vents, starting a food chain like here in the geothermally heated waters of Antarctica, supporting diverse organisms where sunlight is non-existent miles below the ice. Which brings us to another story about a breakaway tribe, this time composed not of monkeys, but of humans.
Germany is about 9,000 kilometers away from Japan, and while there are no hot tubs there for monkeys, there is a story about a people who broke away from their parent civilization and for whatever reason pursued a new home in harsh icy conditions. This tribe of humans found that civilization could also be maintained from below by the volcanic thermal springs which bring life-sustaining heat from below to subterranean caverns even below miles of ice. The rare video that you are now looking at comes to us from scientists at the Australia Antarctic Division who have sent a robot below the thick ice and have released this footage showing off a colorful underwater glimpse of the rarely seen Antarctic habitat. Upon first seeing this, I couldn't help but be reminded of some of the scenes from the movie Avatar, which was full of colorful blues and pinks and purples. And that's what this reminded me of instantly. New Swabia, or New Schwabenland as it's called in German, is an area of Antarctica that was explored by the German Antarctic Expedition, which discovered ice-free areas with warm, freshwater lakes and vegetation. These discoveries led to a cryptic announcement during World War II by then German Navy Grand Admiral Carl Donitz, who in 1943 stated, and I quote, The German submarine fleet is proud of having built for the Fuhrer in another part of the world a Shangri-La, an impregnable fortress, end quote. While it is widely accepted that the Nazis were totally defeated with the German government's formal surrender in 1945, then Secretary of Defense James Forrestal sent a naval task force called Operation High Jump to Antarctica in 1946 after the war ended, including Admiral Nimitz, Admiral Krusen, and Admiral Byrd, commanding over 4,700 military troops from the US, Britain, and Australia, consisting of three naval battle groups, supposedly conducting a science expedition. The US military and intelligence were apparently invading Antarctica in an effort to locate and destroy the immense underground facility, nicknamed Base 211, allegedly constructed by the Germans before, during, and immediately after the Second World War. The possibility that the Earth contains massive subterranean caverns, or is at least partially hollow, and that ancient or modern breakaway civilizations flourish within them has renewed people's interest in this subject, which still is considered by the media to be taboo or fake news. But is it fake or is history about to be rewritten? My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. Thank you for sharing, liking, subscribing, and especially to those who donated to Atlantean Gardens, the nonprofit organization that I contribute these videos to. I always look forward to reading your comments, even though I don't always get a chance to reply, I do appreciate them. I will see you next time.